Good morning. What kind of mood are you in today? Did you know that food affects our mood and our mood affects the food that we choose? Have you ever paid attention and taken a little time to go, hmm, I'm craving something. What's that about? Am I really hungry? Or is there something stirring within that has me reaching for that food or that craving? In my first round of taking Beyond Addiction, I learned that food is our biggest addiction on top of the most subtle addiction, our beliefs and our patterns and our thoughts. And so I had to sit with the fact that when things were coming up within me, I was finding food an easy distraction because of course I love to be in the kitchen. I love to prepare. It comes from my heart. I can validate in my mind with many different uh, beliefs and theories of why I, that's important for me to do or why I need to do it in this moment. Sometimes it's easy to use food as an explanation for why you're not doing something else. Well, I need to eat, so that I'll put that off. So you go in the kitchen and do something so you don't have to think about that. That's the easiest distraction I learned that I could use to get out of my stuff. But it's really important to recognize, is the craving going to satisfy and serve you in the long run? Or is it just going to temporarily fix something? Because this is where it becomes an addiction if you allow it and you don't sit with what really is coming up. Are you craving sweet? Are you craving salty? There's a whole psychology around the types of food you crave and the foods you crave as comforting to have something sweet might be because you feel you're missing the sweetness and the richness of life. And so it's easier to eat something sweet than to look at where maybe you need a little sweetening up or something salty. It's just all about balance. And this body is a temple. It's an opportunity to take care of yourself and recognize if you have self-love and self-respect enough to treat it with the reverence that you would if you were house, housing and hosting somebody you truly honor and respect. How would you treat them? If you believe in God or you believe in a higher power, if you were hosting them, would you treat them the way you treat your body? Because you should be revered just as much. This body is sacred. It's beautiful. It's you should act like it. Life, your, your life depends upon it because it does. It's all about mind, body, soul connection. And if we treated it more with the knowing that it is a temple versus it is an amusement park, maybe we'd be a little bit happier and feel more into what is as opposed to numbing up all the stuff that we don't want to deal with. This is something I was sitting with this morning. And especially because I know I have treated my body like an amusement park. I doubt I'm the only one. But again, sometimes you go through experiences, life lessons, to know, to learn, to grow. So we can come into the wisdom of our knowing, integrate all those experiences, and take those lessons as blessings and to put them into action. So the next time you get a craving, the next time you want to reach for food, check yourself before you reach for food. Check your mood before you reach for food. The most beautiful thing you can do is take a moment to recognize if it's an emotion, if it's a trigger, if it's a true need and desire that you have to eat. Because chances are, it might be an opportunity to sit with whatever is arising. <sighs> so let's check the cards for today. Mm. Mm, food is a wonderful thing. We use food to celebrate, to commune, to connect. 
We want to feel love, and so sometimes food is our way of showing and acting in love, whether you're preparing it or partaking in it. Our lives revolve around food. There's no getting around it unless you decide you want to become a breatharian. <laughs> and so far as I've learned, I'm not here to just live off, off of prana and breath, although that is the most important thing we could ever have. I like food. I like taste. And you needn't worry, today's card says, you needn't worry. There's no one in your life who hasn't loved you. They're all just learning how to show it. Love, big sillies, the universe. Yeah, you know, everybody is showing up to us in the way they are and the only way they know. So if somebody doesn't show you the love in the way that you need it, there's one of two reasons. Either you're not loving yourself enough and demonstrating an example for them to follow, or it's possible they're still healing and they don't know what it's like to truly love you on your terms because they're not still learning to love themselves with what they themselves were raised with for their form of love. Love looks different to everybody because we're raised in different environments, different externals and families and perceptions and filters. And so therefore, the reason many of us don't understand what love is and how it looks is because maybe we don't know what that is. Maybe you're just learning and trust it that whatever comes up, it's always an opportunity that you needn't worry. There's no one in your life who hasn't loved you. They're all just learning to show it. So love thyself, treat yourself as a temple, your body, revere it as you would want to revere someone you love. Love yourself as much as you can. Have a blessed day. I love you.